From the digital world to your world, it's the Kevin Gill Show. Your PMA Power Hour. What up, the old family? We remain internally embedded all up in your mix. Welcome to episode 156 of the Kevin Gill Show. Your PMA Power Hour. Last week on the show, the groundbreaking and genre-defying Amigo the Devil. A man you should know, a man you should hear, and a man who will be on tour throughout December, throughout 2019, throughout the U.S. and Europe. Check him out. This week on the Kevin Gill Show, I am geeked to announce an interview that has been in the works for a very, very long time, and schedules being what they are, sometimes it takes a minute to sync up. But that's what we did just the other night when Every Time I Die sold the fuck out of the UC Berkeley Theater and delivered a mind-blowing show along with Turnstile and Vane. And that tour is going to be rolling all through the U.S. throughout December, culminating in TID the season, T-I-D, for Time I Die. Put the E in front of it for the every. But the point is they have an annual Christmas blowout that goes down every year in Buffalo. This year's no exception. But we're going to get more into that in the outro. Join the conversation on social media at Andy Complains on Twitter for our friend Andy Williams, at OG Kevin Gill for me, at Kevin Gill Show for the show. And without further ado, let's throw it on over to the interview. What up, though, family? Today, uh, it is an honor to enter into the uh, long legacy of great Kevin Gill Show guests, a man who is a parent, he is a professional wrestler, he is a guitarist, and he is a podcaster. It's an honor and a thrill to be chopping it up here in Berkeley, California, with Andy Williams from Every Time I Die. What up, though? Hi. What's going on? Finally on the KG Show. Yes, we talked about it. We got to meet ages bl- ago. Yeah, yeah, which is just amazing. And uh, I was reminiscing about it with uh, Brody King, yeah, yeah. who uh, possibly by the time you hear this will be out on the KG Show or will be out uh, soon enough. But uh, I always remember that was a great day, uh, yeah. a great day in Los Angeles. Yep. So I'm glad we could finally uh, sync this up. Me Thank you too. for making it happen, brother. Yeah. Going back to your earliest days, you know, obviously your band is very closely associated with Buffalo, but you've also made it very publicly known. While you live just a few minutes from Buffalo, you were not yeah. originally from Buffalo, nor do you reside in Buffalo. North Tonawanda, New York. Put it on the map, yes. and I'm just trying to help you represent because thank I know you, you're very you. proud of it and you like to represent Extremely. it. Uh, I heard a, or watched the interview with you recently where someone asked you if uh, if you could live anywhere in the country or whatever, yeah. where would you live? And just without missing a beat, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, North Tonawanda. It's the greatest. It's where the world at, world started. <laughs> so now, uh, coming up there, man, what was your early uh, interactions or connections with the world of professional wrestling? Uh, you want my sister? I have a sister that's six years older than me. At one point in time, she dated uh, a dude who was a uh, like on the wrestling team, and when she was like in high school, and I was like a little kid, and he he had this friend. His name was Brett Setlack. You know, you guys probably know him. Uh, and his friend's name was John Lewis, which you guys probably know. He's from North Tonawanda. Sure. Uh, the local yeah. scene. And, like, John Lewis used to come to the house with, with you know, that was his best friend. And the one day he was like, yo, do you want to watch wrestling? And I was like, sure. I don't know what it is. I was, like, literally a child. Like, I was probably eight years old. <laughs> Just like a young, yeah. sculpable piece of and clay. I mean, I had seen wrestling, but I In didn't passing, know like turning the channel. Yeah, and I remember like we didn't watch WWF. Like that was like it was normal. Like you would normally watch WWF at that time. Sure. Instead, he was like WCW is on, and he turned on NWA, like NWA WCW, and like I think the first person on the screen was the dog face gremlin. Wow, Rick Steiner, and instantly I was like, that's my guy. That's awesome. And, like, that was my first favorite wrestler was, like, Rick Steiner. I just needed to know everything about him. He was, like, barking and wore the headgear, the whole nine, right? And then that night was the exact night. It was, like, I'm going to get it wrong, but it was, like, let's say, like, Clash of the Champions or something like that. And it was the one where the Midnight Express went against uh, the Road Warriors in the scaffold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just watched that clip last night. And that was it. (laughs) 
And like corny, like falling and breaking. Oh, so even as a kid, you you knew that shit was just like that dude's fucking super hurt for real. (laughs) Yeah, the most unathletic human being falling Falling that. And I don't even know. Even though Big Bubba Rogers was underneath him, and that guy's a mountain of a man, I still no one's ever tried to catch anyone that way. That's that's ridiculous. It's wild, man. Yeah, that's not acceptable. So that was like my first. Like I think that was like the first time I was like, "Yep, I'm in." And I remember like from that day on, I was obsessed with like learning about the wrestling I didn't know about, which I only knew WWF, but I knew it like looked hokey and like corny and like NWA didn't. You know what I mean? Right. Well, it had the blood a lot of times. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just it had that edge to it. You know yeah. what I mean? What what some people in corporate world viewed as like, oh, that's Southern wrestling. Yeah. Really, though, was the heartbeat of real wrestling, Dude, the, the real. true, pure magic of wrestling. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of like, not to knock WWE because WWE is so sick, but like, I feel like WWE does that thing where like, like almost like we were just talking about the David Arquette thing. Sure. There's like a point in time when like the world recognizes something that you're interested in. And I feel like WWE is like, that's like, if something makes it to WWE, you're like, oh shit, okay, that's topical in the world right now. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that like Royal Rumble, like David Arquette comes out. You right, know what I mean? right, right. Because, because like that it's topical or like, th- like they give, I don't think they'll ever give Enzo another shot, but like. Enzo goes out and he does that thing, and then it like kind of explodes on the internet, and then WWE is gonna somehow like nod to that. You know what I mean? Like, sure, sure. That. If if Enzo would had filled up the whiskey that night or whatever, oh, I, yeah. I think it would have increased his chances. Of but Ar- Arquette has totally deserved a, or totally deserves a Royal Rumble spot. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, something. You know what I mean? There's and, a nod. Yeah, and I, I think he would add a lot to any any show, any wrestling show, or any production sure. that he's on. Like yeah. the way that guy carries himself how humble he is his yes. love of wrestling like i mentioned i got to do commentary for that show he legit arrived at the building in a bruiser brody shirt which you know what i awesome. mean which to me is just so, so cool. like that that there's no easier way to say you know what's up than to be like all right dude. a brody shirt yeah 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 and that was like you know early on i just remember like as soon as like w i knew nwa i was like the nwa wcw and i would get in fist fights at school if like dudes were like hulk hogan is the man i'd be like no he's not rick flair's a man or barry windham or sure. you know what i mean like whoever. anyone in that tough echelon yeah and it was just like you don't know what you're talking about man like barry windham would smoke hulk yeah, hogan can barely wrestle yeah yeah you know what i mean and it's crazy to, to fast forward to me like wrestling like when i I first started wrestling when I was 18. I started training when I was like 18 and then I blew my knee out. And like, that was the catalyst for me to like pick up a guitar, play guitar. And then the band started. Sure. Right. So really cool. And then at 36, I was like, I'll get back into it or whatever. You know what I mean? And at 36, I started like, like training again. So then I started like trying to find myself as a wrestler, you know, like, and this is like, at first, I think you're just thinking constantly and you're just like, oh, okay. Like here's moves okay oh this is the section of the match this happens this is the section of the sure you know what i mean like shit like that you don't really ever think about the entertainment section and then someone randomly was like hey go back and watch like hogan wrestle in like the early 80s when he did like his J- japan run and i was like huh okay and i went back and watched it and literally he wrestled exactly how i wrestle right and right because he did a different thing for at sure that time you know and what i'm saying like, a different no style fucking way man like literally like to a T like moved how I, you know what I mean? How like I moved, like he moved like shit like that. The same moves, like same moves. It was crazy. It's, it's the big man style. Yeah. And I was like, God damn it. I'm a Hogan fan. Like I knew it. I was just like, Ugh. but his Japanese run, not his like hokey yellow. Style. Sure. Even though he did have a sick in 93, he had a sick, or was it nine? Yeah, it was 93 where he like went back to new Japan and wrestled Muda. Oh, did he? In the yellow and red. And oh, it's wow. so cool, dude. So Hogan what wasn't a guy you were into growing up, but that no. you later grew to respect some of the different yeah. sides of Hogan you saw later. Yeah. Who were the guys that you were super, super into? Oh, Muda was like, I would say it was like Muda, Brody. Oh, man. <clears throat> Brody's like, because I, you know, I, I'm sure you probably did. Like WCCW is on like ESPN2. Yes, yes, yes. So like I would like rush home and like Brody would show yeah, like up 4 there. 4.30 in the afternoon yeah, or something. Yeah, or Hanson would be on. Like all Absolutely. of those dudes, all of them were on there. And like you had like exposure to dudes you would only read about in the magazines like Gino Hernandez, um, Mandy Fernandez. The Raging Bull. Oh, the greatest. Iceman King Parsons. Yeah, Iceman King Parsons. Yeah, he was the, the only man on the planet who could shatter a solid block of ice with his ass. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah, how yeah. you know he's the, the Iceman. butt butt. 
<laughs> yeah, the butt butt of yeah. very <laughs> appropriate. You know, and maybe in the Attitude Era, it would have been, what, the ass butt or whatever? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Butt butt does have a And nice... now it's just hip attack. Yeah, which is weird. You know what I yeah. mean? When you, It's always weird to call it a hip attack because it's clearly Your butt. A, a butt attack. Yeah, yeah. Cole Cabana calls it the, the flying asshole or the flying apple, depending yeah. if it's <laughs> yeah. the, the, the family-friendly version of the yeah. show. So... Going back, though, so you're a kid, you're 18, you do this training, you start yeah. getting into wrestling, it transitions into getting into a band. What was your initial contact with and connecting with, with music growing up? Like, when did the music bug start to bite prior to, like, going so far as to getting a guitar? Because obviously I, you had some albums and shit before you for got sure. a guitar. Yeah. I think it's like this. I'm I'm really bad at anything I'm not, like, into. So, like, I've always been into music and I've always been into wrestling. So, like... I think I've just wasted all real life skills on those two things. Sure. It's so very like, focused. yeah, I'm not good at anything else. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm a great wrestler by any means. I'm not a good wrestler. You know what I mean? But like, I can sit and talk wrestling with you for hours because it's something I love. You know what I mean? Sure. And like music was like, kind of like the same thing. Like when I was a kid and still to this day, it's like, I've never tried to be a jaded human being about anything. Amen. You know what I mean? Because I, I hate those, like, people. Like, there's Thank nothing you. worse than when people, like, complain about something and it's like, dude, like, you know, or, like, the, my, my least favorite thing is, like, a new band comes out and they're fucking awesome. And then you, like, talk to one of your older friends and you're like, dude, have you checked out this restaurant? And he's like, I liked Unbroken when they were around the first time. And yeah. it's like... I liked them, yeah, like, ten years ago when they did the first demo with the other lineup on the old label that never released like, the record. Yeah, but they didn't write these songs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the song that I'm talking about is a great song. You know For what I sure. mean? And it just it makes no sense. Or, like, they'll, like, equate a new band with an old band. They'll they just rip them off. And it's just like, no, they don't. Like, it's a completely different time. Sure. You know what I mean? Maybe they influenced, but, like... My band wouldn't have started if Dead Guy didn't start. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, Dead Guy started it all for Every Time I Die. Like, that was the band that we wanted to be. Still right. to this day. Like, when we write a song, it's just like, oh, would Dead Guy do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What would Dead Guy cool. do? Cool. Yeah. That's incredible, though, what you talked about is not uh, not becoming jaded. And, and I, I couldn't agree with you more because just to take that joy in those things to go go see a wrestling show or go perform yeah. a show write a song if, if you look at it that way it's if you become jaded with what everyone else is aspiring to get yeah you kind of lock yourself into a, a circle of misery because of course you work to get somewhere and now you're unhappy with where yeah. you are somehow you know what i'm saying you gotta yeah. in, uh, embrace it yeah and like that, that's the thing like i hate accounting i just tune it out because wrestling exists and music sure. exists. And then it, when it comes, it, it like bites me in the ass. You know what I mean? Then it's Same. just like, oh shit. Okay, cool. <laughs> Ditto. I got to take, I got to take advantage of this. <laughs> Fuck. You know what I mean? Like I'm real slacking here, but man, I could, I had to watch that, you know, the, the super junior tournament, new Japan. Sure. I just forgot about my bills. You right, know what I mean? It happens. It's stuff like that. So like I've been, and now that Obsessed. all the wrestling companies and the products that you like have a way of just drawing the money directly from your account, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It doesn't like, exist. I said this the other day. I was like, I have that like that thing that like re ups your like Starbucks card. Mm -hmm. So like it's always at thirty dollars, <laughs> right? And I'm like, it's not real money. And someone's sure. like, it literally comes out of your bank account. And I was just like, but it's not real, right? Right. You know what I mean? You're it's not like an app. The paper. You know what I mean? Like. Just an app. It just says thirty bucks. You know what I mean? And then like, plus it's only a few at a time because I'm yeah. constantly re-upping it. It's not like I'm putting the full thirty up every time. And my girlfriend is like, obviously, like when you find someone you love, it becomes your second mind. Sure. You know what I mean? Like that. And Hannah's like really good at that stuff. So like, she'll equate it. She's like, you know, the drink that you like at Starbucks, it's like almost seven dollars, and you're doing it every day like right. that, seven like, times thirty. But I'm just like. It's not real, though. Like, it's not real money, dude. It's like an app, you it's know? It's an app. It's yeah, digital. Yeah. Like, that's, it's, it, like, that's, it's like, it's like oh, go back to, like, like what you're saying, though. Like, I'm super obsessed with, with music. And I need, I was, like, obsessed to it, like, at the point where, like, people are obsessed with, like, baseball. Yeah, yeah, And, like, something, and I'm not, like, much of a sports guy. Like, when I was a kid, I liked baseball, I liked football and yeah, stuff like that. But, like, too. as soon as I grew older. As soon as you develop taste, really. It just isn't cool. Like football is not fun, right? It's like ten minutes of of stalling, <laughs> or yeah, or yeah. yeah, vice versa, yeah. Like, and that's it. So like, no basically, what you do is you like to just hang out with your friends and eat, 
while something's on in the background. Sure, and and drinking and gambling if you want to yeah. get the full degenerate cycle. <laughs> yeah, of, for sure. The full range of degenerative motion. And it's like, okay, that could just be My Little Pony on the background. It doesn't matter. Amen. right, It's right. just like it's getting all your stuff out that you like to do, right? So I just never, like, took to, like, that many sports like that. And then the music came. It was like, oh, who's that bass player? Oh, I need to know. That's, sure. That's... Re reading the liner notes. Yeah. And uh, for me, a big one was always like bands you liked, what shirts they were wearing. For sure. That's the ultimate. And you would check it out. Yeah. And I mean, you grew up in New York, right? So like, I would have never known about No Redeeming Social Value if I didn't pick up a neglect oh, like right, CD or something right, like that. Right. And I'm thanks. trying to think of like, sure. The first time I remember seeing your bands like, thanks. In the, like a thank you list, you know what sure, I mean? And that's I was huge. like, that's "Well, the, I gotta fucking check it out now." That's a billboard of the underground, of course. Yeah, yeah. And that was literally Spotify before Spotify Amen. was like a thank you list. Yeah, 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 like yeah. literally. And sometimes photocopied, sometimes professionally yeah. printed. And then it, it was crazy because, like, uh, in the and the other thing that I love, which is wrestling, that was like the PWI five hundred, <laughs> or like, you know what I mean? Like, you'd go on there and like, who's Mitsuharu Masawa? Right. I need to know well, everything about him. He was number seven last year. Right. That means, you know, he's ahead of Bob Backlund. Right. Yeah, player. yeah. And it's like, then you're like, how the fuck do I find these Japanese dudes? And then you're like, wait, who's the orange guy? No, that's Kento Gabasha. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But I got to check out Kawada. He's the yellow guy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and then you would like see it. And then I remember buying a video game. I remember I was about like to say. going and I bought like, it was, um, <laughs> Uh, was it Fire Pro, right? It, not Fire Pro. It was the other one. It was the oh, one that uh, was like, like Tukan Ratsutin or um... it emulated. Uh, it was Virtual Pro Wrestling. Yeah, it yeah, emulated yeah. NWO versus WCW. Right, right. Like that one, and it had everybody on it, mm -hmm. and like, but it didn't have their names. They just sure, had like other names. You could just recognize them from their tones yeah. or their, their yeah. signature. But that was like that was it, man. That that was my thank you list in like wrestling, and then like. like I was just so obsessed with music and wrestling. Like, those were the two things I needed to know everything about. And I'm still like that. And it's kind of crazy because, like, like today, man, I told JC this story. Like, uh, right as he, like, walked up, one of the guys in Vane, the opening band or whatever, I was saying, like, oh, I used to live in Boston. And I, like, went to this show, and there was this band called East Beast that played. And I just, like, I don't know. I always remember it was, like, crazy. There was, like, this little kid screaming at the crowd and the band. And he's just sitting there, and his jaws, like, dropped, like, the bass player. And he's, like, you realize that Vane was East Beast. Wow. And then that guy left, and I joined, and, like, but we became Vane. And I was like, no way. You know what I mean? Like, just... Yeah, like, how small... And now it's like, I don't know anything about East Peace, but now I'm like, that is so cool. Like, I saw... Ba I basically saw pre vein Yeah, you saw the origin, like, yeah, the, yeah. the episode zero or whatever. When they all Vane. started, like, playing together. And now they're, like, this cool thing. You know what I mean? Right, like, that's amazing. Not that they weren't cool then. They just were different. You know right. what I mean? But, they, yeah, they fully evolved. This was their destiny. Yeah, and it was... Vane. Like, and it, it has always become that way, like... I guess I'm like a little on the spectrum when it comes to that stuff. You know what I mean? Like where it's like I need to know everything. Sure. Like what amps those dudes used and stuff. And like it gets kind of crazy when like your taste expands into like the the jazz fusion. Sure. Just like, mastery of the instrument. Area. And then you're just like, wait a second. You know, and you're then you're taking things to like a fraction in your brain of sure. like of obsession. And that's like where it's You're opening, yeah, going yeah, into the, through the like, wonder glass. Oh, Lenny White played on this one record. Well, I got to listen to all the Lenny White stuff. Everything. And my poor girlfriend has to like deal with this shit today. Like I said, we drove from LA, and I was like, "Yo, I got to check out this Azteca record." And she's like, "Who's Azteca?" I'm like, "Well, Lenny White played it. It was his band before he was in." And then I, you know, return to forever and blah, blah. And I'm like listening to the origins of Lenny White, who now currently plays on like R&B stuff. You know what I mean? Session guy. Yeah. And it, it's just, and he's old, you know, he's like an old dude, but I checked out all of his jazz stuff and it's awful, man. <laughs> My brain is just shot. As a young person, what were some of the shows that were most impactful or most influential to you? Like live shows that you went to go see, you know, how some of those first shows are kind of burned yeah, into your mind. Um, like I saw Sick of It All. On the Just Look Around tour. Fuck yeah. And it was like unreal. Because I loved, they were, uh, that was like my first like obsessed hardcore band. Sure. That I was like into. And then I got to see them on like my favorite record. You know, and by the way, I didn't know that like Scratch the Surface was going to come out. But, of course, like, right. You know For that I mean? moment in time. It was just like, oh shit. And I remember like me and my friends like talking to them and being like, yo, you got to play Rat Pack. You got to play Rat Pack. And they were like, we haven't played that song in years. Like, blah, blah, blah. And then 
they then started like after that day. Every time they would play Buffalo, they would play Rap Pack. That's because awesome. they knew dudes from Buffalo wanted. To they want to hear that, that song. song. Yeah, yeah. Sick of it all. So they, they were the first uh, hardcore matinee I ever went to at CBGB's. Was yeah. Sick of it all. Uh, SFA Coffin Break. Yeah. Like Coffin Break, I could still picture the little yeah. flyer, and it would always said like Coffin Break from Seattle, and I'm just like, wow, like, well, like this is Seattle. New York. These yeah, guys yeah. came from Seattle. This, this must is be crazy. Big. It's space, <laughs> right? They, yeah. What a distance. They came from the Space Needle. <laughs> Who else did you see live back in those days? Was uh, uh, across across oh, the spectrums dude, a ton, man. I saw a ton of bands. I saw like Paul Bear. Oh wow, um, with Sheer Terror. Yeah, when I I like saw Sheer Terror like early on. Sure. It was like. Right after, like, Thanks for Nothing. Wow. Or something like that. And it, they were unreal. And, like, Biohazard was on the show, and you never do. <laughs> oh, God. You know what I mean? Like, Biohazard, self-titled, I think, was out at yeah, the time. Yeah, that's, that's the joint. Yeah. Uh, me and my girl went, the one of the the first date we went on, I think, was, was it Sick of It All and DRI on a co-headlining tour, local openers, Biohazard and Sheer Terror. That's amazing. At the Sundance, I think, in Long Island. Yeah. And just that is, like, if you could survive that show, and then it's like, all right, I lived. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm I, ready for Manhattan. It's kind of crazy, though, because, like, and Vogel will never admit this, but the, one of the first shows I went to, him, Garrett Klon, Tim Redman, like, a Buffalo's, like, who's who? Drummer of Snapcase, Tim Redman, Garrett Klon, singer of Texas of Reason, and Vogel from Terror, like, pinning a dude down, and, like, Vogel stomped on his dick, I remember. <laughs> That was like one of the first shows. I was like 12, 13 years old. I was like, oh my God. And then, but, but like, it's like going to like a PWG or something. Sure. Where you're like, uh, when's the next one? Right. You right. know what I mean? It's like, this is cool. This guy's getting his ass beat. I don't know why I like this. Like, right. I'm terrified right now, but like, and this is with cool. the, the righteousness of hardcore, like, you can be assured that that guy committed a, a, something, an ethics yeah. violation, a breach of protocol, <laughs> yeah. perhaps disrespect. And, you know, last of all, certain, sometimes in hardcore this happens, he might have been stabbed in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. The chain that him and his friends, he was the weak link. Sure. And in hardcore. <laughs> Yes, there's a lot of weak links. Uh, and they will sing about it. Yes. Um, but yeah, like like it was like just stuff like that, like just the vibe and the smell and like the danger, a little bit of danger, a little yeah, bit of everything. You're just like a little scared. And by any means, I don't like think you should go kick the shit out of someone at a show. But when that's like the first thing you sure. see, it's polarizing in either a positive or a negative. And for some reason, I was like, whoa. Uh, this is cool. You know what I mean? But I was like 12 or 13. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and, and if you would have caught a bad one, so to speak, or if oh, yeah, the finger been of fate would have pointed at you, you'd be like, next time you'd be like, oh, I heard like, I don't know, third base is playing. Or <laughs> you might have went in a totally yeah, different yeah, direction yeah. instead of being like, oh, yeah. you know that concert where you go to it and then people jump on your girl's head and then you, yeah. you hurt your back Very and scary. you have to leave and you couldn't work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, that was, uh, I, I don't know, man. Did like, you ever see Suicidal back in those days? I saw that well, when I saw them. It was uh, Art of Revolution. Like okay. by that time, like it was, they were like opening for like, Queen's Right. Kind of, of yeah, they were kind of like a hair metal band by that time. I got to see them. It was a one of the most violent shows I ever saw. Of course, was uh, and this is New York, so it's the whole people don't understand now. But back in the day, when you mixed sounds and drew an audience that liked yeah. more than one type of music, Crossover. especially in New York, fighting, lots of fighting yes. between the different factions, as silly as that sounds now. Yeah. But uh it was I don't know if these guys were on their way to Europe or back or whatever it was, but it was like a one off show and it was suicidal tendencies and creator. So it, it at the Ritz. And it's just like the and it was fucking wild. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh did you go to the DRI show at the Ritz from the home no, video? No, no, I came in after that. Dude, that was my introduction to what a live show should be. Sure. Because I had that first before I ever went wow. to a show. I had that I love show. that video. And they're like jumping out of the balcony. And that was sketchy, dude. Like, it wasn't sure. like a short jump. That was like a big jump. And I remember like when I went to that, I finally went to that sick of it all show, my my whole thing was like, well, on that thing, nobody hung out on stage. They got on and got the fuck off. And I was like, I need to get on and get the fuck off as fast as I could. So I remember like running on stage, running past like Lou and Pete and being like, oh my God, it's Lou and Pete. Right. And then 
because I love like one of my all time favorite hardcore bands is Youth of Today. Sure. Capo used to do like the toe touch. Right. I yeah. did that <laughs> stage dive where I was just folded in half, like touching my toes, and everybody moved. So you just did the except, shoot leg drop? <laughs> dude, instead just one heavy metal dude headbanging that wasn't paying attention. Oh shit. And it was just like that like image of like the cats fighting from like Looney Tunes. <laughs> And there's like swearing and sure, stuff like, like that and smoke. dust. <laughs> and then we're both on the ground, just like that. And I remember him just going, fuck, dude, fuck, like that. And me being like, I'm so sorry, man. And I was like, he's going to kick the shit out of me because he was like a 30 year old man. And sure. I was like <laughs> a 14. Kid. Yeah. But yeah, it was, that was, and it, again, man, it was, it hurt so bad. But I instantly, I was just like, yeah, man, I can't wait to do that it. again, man. Yeah. God, but I also was like 160 it. pounds at that time. I wasn't like 240. Sure, sure. Yeah, the bigger you are, obviously, the harder Scary, it is to, uh, to it's keep. It's terrifying now. <laughs> Being a band that has like lawsuits and stuff like that, like because of like stage diving. And sure. The shows we like to play, ugh, man, I, I feel bad for anyone that weighs over 200 pounds that – like I'm like 200 is the cutoff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do it. No stage diving. Don't do if you're it. Over 200 pounds. And if you're of of a certain size, like you almost have to you do a certain type of dive. Certain dives may not be for you. Oh, certain yeah, dives yeah. out of your repertoire. <laughs> Dude, and that equates into wrestling. Amen, brother. Dude, this true story about to to bring Brody King back. Sure. So like Brody King's literally this morning he I had a text on my phone that said I'm very thankful for you. I love you. And I text him back, I'm very fortunate that you and I are friends. I love you. You know what I mean? Sure. That's how close we Brotherhood. are. Brotherhood. Very close. And we, this is the day after, this is December 16th of last year. We both, him and I teamed against uh, Hacker Scotty O'Shea and Kevin Blackwood in Toronto. Wow. And the day before, Nate wrestled Blackwood in his singles and there was supposed to be a spot because he's so big. There was supposed to be a spot where like a security dudes were supposed to come up and help Kevin catch him. <laughs> Everybody bailed and he fucking just blasted on the concrete, right? God. So he was pissed off. And I remember of we're driving up and he just looks at me. He goes, I got to get that dive back. And I was like, I got you, man. Like, and we're partners and I'm just like, and I tore my rotator cuff right. the day before. So I'm just like, I got you, man. Right. And I'm just like, this is going to suck. This is going to be the worst, dude. So, again, dudes his side should not be diving the way he does. Right. But he does. And it looks sick. So, screw it. So they and I remember we're there. And I'm, Kevin's, like, one of my best friends, too. And I love it. Hacker's been on our podcast, like, you know, a few times. And he's amazing. But those dudes just threw me to the wolf, <laughs> which was Brody King. And I'm standing there and like, the spot. He's my partner. He's not supposed to hit me. Sure. I took... All of 270 pounds Fuck. of that man, and it hurt so bad. And those dudes kind of bailed on me. They just dropped, and I was the only one that caught him. And I remember I took a, I took his heel to the head, and I was just like, "No, I'm never gonna dive." If right. that's, I'm 240 pounds. That's 30 pounds more than me. I'm never gonna. There's no diving on me. If I, there's eight people out there, maybe. Right, where well, you just literally do guy. the high cross body on the top one guy of a, of a, never a gonna pile. Do it. I'm never going to do it because it's going to hurt. Yeah, I recently saw – I'll leave the names out of it, but I recently saw a Barry, match where Barry some him. someone jumped off the ceiling of the venue in a, yeah. in a planned spot. And there was like a student, I guess a worker, oh, no. and maybe two security people supposed to catch somebody. Yeah. And only the, the student who was like two or three days into training, only he stayed in position and, and fully 100% yeah. caught this guy. The other three bailed, and the kid, was, as a result, broke his ankle from absorbing the guy's catch. Yeah. Um, so I shout out that. to him. I hope he gets well soon. Yeah, me too. I don't hate hearing stuff like that. It's scary. For sure. Now, uh, Even though it's wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's weird because like, there's that fine line. Like, you want people you want to take to it to safe. the limit, but you don't want anyone to be yeah. hurt, you know? And, um, you know what I'm saying? You know what it's like. You know when you see wrestlers after the show or whatever. The way they move around a lot of times in the ring or in front of the people is different from how oh. they move around in yeah. private or in their own. Yeah, you should see me get up in the morning. <laughs> it's awful. I got like a girlfriend. She's a, a bodybuilder like that. And she just gets right out of bed. She's moving around. She's ready to do <laughs> shit. And I'm like, yo, you got to give me 15 minutes. Right, to slowly like, like power up all the segments. <laughs> my life, everything, like every appendage needs to wake up. And my head happens to be awake now, but my ankles are not going to be awake for another 15 minutes. 
we got to chill out. We're not going to be going. It's to do a slow, it. slow burn. No kettlebell swings right now. <laughs> She's like ready to rock. She's got like four coffees in her, and I'm still like putting clothes on. Right, slow, real slow, yeah. over like an so, hour period. For this, this fucks me up more than wrestling, though, man. Playing shows hurts. Yeah, the physicality now. of it. Yeah. As well, and like you know, I'm forty. I'm a, I'll be forty one now in oh two and a half weeks, and like playing a show hurts. Running across the stage hurts more than like getting slammed in a wrestling match. Wow, it's, it's crazy. So yeah, I'm hurting right now, and it's from playing guitar. Come on, man! <laughs> like you're playing guitar is supposed to be like a nerd thing. Sure. Like oh, I sat at home. I right, maybe if you played an acoustic on a stool, yeah, yeah, but then you might get hemorrhoids yeah. or some shit. I had to listen to the, I had to listen to the Chrome mags. fuck my life up. Right, yeah. I always think about that. Like back in the day, if I decided instead of putting out New York hardcore records that I was going to put out electronic records, I would be a fucking zillionaire. Oh, yeah, and all the shit that broke in that time frame. You yeah. know what I mean? I'd be like, even if I was the lowest paid guy in the dance music, oh, you'd still be good. <laughs> I'd be crazy paid. Yeah. I'd have my own wrestling federation. Yeah. I'd have everything. I have like buds who like work in the EDM world, and it is like ridiculous. As it's lucrative. Like, yeah, all it, they make is money. It's crazy to me too is that people will willingly pay more and I'm not knocking there's beautiful production that goes on with these electronic yeah. festivals and all this but even if it's just a bar people will be like oh it's $20 and they're playing X genre of music I'm in yeah. but if, if it's a band for $10 for any price it's like yeah it's too much yeah. or yeah it's just yeah. bizarre to me. That's so weird. Now, recently, you guys made made waves, no pun intended, with a dramatic series of events in New York City uh, on the Rocksoft concert yeah. cruise. You guys took that over for multiple days, sold out St. Saint- Vitus multiple times. What was uh, what was it like holding it down in, in the Big Apple, the the, the big city? It so was to speak? so cool, man. Like like the thing is, like we, we've been a band for twenty years, and like you've kind of like. We've done the world, th- you know. What I mean, we've played Europe, we've played Japan, and like we love those places and stuff like that. But like, what else is there to do? You know what I mean? Like when it comes to that, it's like okay, well, then you got to start knocking things off. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's just like, hey, let's play a boat for three days. All right, and we did it. We did it like the prior year. We did it in 2017, and it was awesome. And they yelled at us after because like our fans just ripped the boat apart. Right, ripped the ceilings down, and, and we were like, that. oh, they're never going to ask us. So cool. And then they hit us up and they're like, you want to do three in a row? And we were like, well, there goes your boat. You know what I mean? Like, right. And the first day they fucked the boat up. Then the second day they fucked it up more. And then the third day they fucked it up, you know, like. To again. completion. <laughs> yeah. And like, that. oh man, that was, there were some wild things that happened too. Like crazy, like amounts of like, wow, did you just do that? Like a girl faked an injury because apparently like last year she got, when I say backstage, Back behind a yeah. curtain. Sure. You know what I mean? Where there's like pizza. Sure. And like I usually have a pretty good grip as to like I remember who's backstage usually from like shows. I have like a weird memory with, when it comes to that stuff. All I can remember is like a guy and a girl sitting off to the side. Right? But apparently this girl faked an asthma attack. So the whole show stopped. We had to stop our set because she was mad that she wasn't backstage. <laughs> So she faked it Are and then serious? and then started gloating about it to like fans of the band at a bar after that she like faked the whole thing to stop us. What that's insane. It literally is insane. Like crazy. So that happened one of the days. That's how you earn a lifetime ban. For sure. Like uh, yeah, like picture here this girl's right. never allowed to be in it. And I remember her <laughs> like she, the Enzo Amore picture they posted it in she LA listens Reno. to this. She looked like Hatchet Face from Cry Baby. <laughs> um <laughs> So, yeah, which is a real <laughs> rough one. <laughs> Indeed. I, you just, yeah, if the word, almost anything in front of the word face is yeah, a yeah, super, yeah. super damaging yeah. Uh, description. Yeah. So that happened. And then a dude's arm broke severely bad. I heard about this. And, and they had dude, to bring the boat back for a it, minute. It was legit. Like, I'm usually pretty good about that stuff. If I see someone, like, hurt, especially if it's on stage, I'll usually, like, go and try to help. This one... It was like I turned around. It was out of sight, out of mind. Right. Like I was so scared because I saw the dude's arm just flopping around. And like he looked at me and I put my tail between my legs and turned around. Sure. I was like, I can't handle this right now. Uh, yeah. His arm looked like rubber. And it was like. I'm cringing just sitting dude, here. It was. It snapped right above the elbow. And it was just hanging. And I ah. saw him flop it over. Oh, and I was like, yeah, I'm out. And I just turned around. I got to go. 
I turned around and just looked at Hannah, and Hannah's like sitting behind my amp, and she's just like, and I'm pointing. <laughs> I didn't know I was pointing at my my the the neck of my guitar. Oh. So she thought I like broke a string or something. So all these like strings, she's going like this. She's like looking at my thing, and then like my buddy Chris Morgato is like back there, and he's kind of like looking at my strings, and then she starts like talking to him like I think he broke a string, but he didn't, and I'm like look at the guy's arm and i started doing like the weird like yeah. <laughs> hangy thing and then they look and then you, like you can see the look of horror on their face where it was just like oh boy and then like we had to stop and like oh, you guys did like an intermission i heard yeah, and then they had to, like take them to, they brought the boat oh, to dude. uh into like so, medical you know this, care you'd think that like the guy would give us an update like he'd be like oh guys hey surgery went well we haven't heard anything wow yeah so i got yeah, they just died they actually death just, by broken arm. They actually just threw him in the water. <laughs> like, that was it. They're just like, oh, fuck. Yeah, all we really know for sure is that the boat brought him back. Wait, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, it's <laughs> yeah. speculation on my part that yeah. he got into an ambulance or yeah. an Uber to the hospital. And then we all got sick. Oh, really? That was the third thing. We all got, there was someone on that boat that had like a really bad cold, and literally everybody got it. Wow. Literally. And and wasn't there also, I saw some videos online of like, there was like unicorns. At yeah, this that's the Rocks well. Off people. They okay. make them wear unicorns. And then like, <laughs> that's their uniform. This poor guy, this one dude had to be a penguin. <laughs> like they couldn't find him a big enough thing. So he's just a penguin. I guess if you're one of a group of unicorns, it's kind of cool. But if, there, if there's a group of unicorns and you're the penguin, that's kind of yeah, an yeah. odd, odd man scenario. Like the, uh, the penguin is my favorite. Just a, a random memory of mine that I was thinking of today okay. uh, as I was mentally preparing for this yeah. discussion. I have a trivia question for you. Please. Do you know the very first time that Every Time I Die was featured in a uh, video game soundtrack? A year or game, please. Well, we we definitely did Guitar Hero, but it wasn't Guitar Hero. It was like a weird like race game. I can't think of what the thing is called. There's a name for this type of race. And we were part of a soundtrack like on this like racing game. Like, may, like maybe like one of like the burnouts or whatever and it was like this game where like you could like hit things and you got points to see how far the dude could get ejected out of your car oh yeah yeah yeah. i want to say it was something like that okay i believe uh you know the internet can correct me on this but just based on the research i did today i think the year was 2004 the song was godspeed us to see uh-huh and the game was a game that I personally put the soundtrack together for, Backyard Wrestling 2. Oh, shit, There you're goes right. the fucking neighborhood. Yo, I, I just wrestled Josh Prohibition. Are you serious? Yeah, and I was like... He's a character in Backyard I Wrestling. I was freaking out because, like, the match was cool. It was, like, it was for Blackcraft. It was, like, the, oh, fuck yeah. the Chris Brothers, and it, Matt Cross was in it, and these dudes named the main event from, like, uh, from Pittsburgh were in it. Okay. And stuff like that. And, like, the whole time, like... Me and Matt Cross are pretty close friends, but like me and Josh kind of knew each other, but not really. Sure, but then, because like, he's so close to Matt, you yeah. like know him by association. So they showed up late, and like I freaked out when Josh Prohibition walked in. That's awesome. And I was like, "Yo, hit me with a Saito suplex today, please." And then we didn't touch each other. <laughs> he like I think he need me twice. That was right. The that entire was entire match, and I was like, "All right, cool, man, Josh." And it was all because of the all because of that that video game. Because I loved that video game. It was I awesome. I totally yeah. forgot we were I on personally it. picked all the every song that was on that. So that yeah. was just I had uh, Ferret Music or whoever it was at that yeah. time sent me. I mean, fucking everything they had, yeah. and I'm you know meticulous. So I was like, yeah. And today, for some reason in my mind, I thought it was Ebola Rama was the song I had chosen because I was yeah. so familiar with the video. But then uh, I went and looked, and it was Godspeed Us to See. But yeah. as soon as I heard Godspeed Us to See, I knew why. Because you know what I mean? Yeah, if, yeah, of course. I always looked at it as uh, what I tried to do with the soundtracks was like I wanted it to be like for people that are hearing the band that never heard them before, what in a way is the most representative and accessible at the of same course. time? Yeah, and that song was pretty had, – had everything, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, right from the jump. Have you ever had Ricky Shane Page? Huh? No, I haven't. I've got to meet him before, and he's cool, but I've never – uh, we have not crossed paths in the real world in quite some time, yeah, but I would guys, like to. I know he's a regular on your podcast. Yeah, he's unreal, and he you can talk to him about everything, and he is a historian. Wow. On, like, backyarding and, like, wow. deathmatch stuff. Like, he's the guy that, like, I still don't understand deathmatches. Sure. But when he, like, breaks it down, I'm like, okay, there is a story there. You know what I mean? Like, sure, I'm not sure. just watching, like, Jackass. You know what I mean? And that's – sometimes that happens. Like, it happens where, like, you're 
you know, you you see a death match and you're, you're you're totally forgetting that it's a man versus a man in like a challenging match. Or you know, what I, mean? sure. like, I know that sounds insane, but like what pro wrestling is supposed to be is a is is human versus human. Sure, say that competitive. It's a competition. Yeah. You know, who's the best athlete? Who's, yeah, who's the best in the world? And like, what they do. You're. I think you're like you're seeing this stuff that is so not in your world when like you watch death matches that you're like. You totally forget that there's a story. You right, know what I because, mean? Yeah, like, each spot resets your brain oh, in man. a way. And, and, like, you know, you see that stuff. And you're like, how is that guy standing? And then you're like, then at the end of the match, you're like, oh, I was kind of, like, paying attention to this story the whole time. But Ricky, like, when Ricky breaks it down, I mean, he's a master. So, yeah. And what is the name of your podcast? I know you have uh, uh, Pepper Parks, who ne- yeah. now goes by a, uh, Braxton, Braxton Sutter. Sutter which... Just the Blade. That's the Blade. pretty much all we're going to call him from now on. Done. The Blade. Um, yeah, we do kick an ass with uh, Jesse and Andy, and that's what the podcast is. And the po- like, dude, I I love podcasting so much, and I don't give a shit if anyone listens to it because <laughs> it's so much fun. Just, it's just, just cool, what we're, like, right. just talking. You know what I mean? And like, you you get like a little bit of a story out of everybody, and like. Sometimes, you know, you, you get a guy that you're like, okay, this guy's this is going to be a great podcast. And then it ends up he's just a wet sandwich yep. and just can't – there's not really you, – you, you can't, yeah. You can't Even Ric Flair couldn't carry him to yeah, a, a yeah. good segment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and, and it's weird how that works. But then, like, you'll have a guy that you're like, all right, well, I don't know how this is going to go. And then you're like, holy fuck, this is like right. one of the best ever. best interviews ever, you know. And you're like, well, you know, if 30 people hear it. Yeah, right. It was, it was cool, and that they'll take those lessons and pass them on to who knows sure. how many yeah, more yeah. people. Yeah. Now you touched on Blackcraft uh, Wrestling a minute ago. I know they have uh, a role in your annual because you guys don't just have this annual New York boat thing exploding. Yeah. You also have uh, a, a well-established holiday spectacular. Yeah. And Blackcraft Wrestling's involved. Please tell the people about this. We do. So, like, we started doing the Christmas shows. I think this is like year thirteen or fourteen. Wow. And we started doing them, and it was like. More or less, like, let's see what we can get away with sure. at first. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we, like, did them at, like, a bowling alley one year. Oh, wow. And, like, you know, just stuff like that. It was just, it got to a point, And then, like, I think it was, like, 2016, we started talking about, I think it started talk is, like, to try to, like, goad the Goo Goo Dolls into, like, playing one of our Christmas shows. Nice. So, like, we got to make it, like, big. So big that it's yeah. natural for them to want to and be there. I want to say, like, 2015 or 14, we actually asked Robbie. We're like, hey, man, why don't you guys play the Christmas show this year? And he goes, really? You guys would want us to? Wow. And we were like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, under, like, a secret name. You yeah. know what I mean? I get up and just play a couple songs. And he, like, ran away and literally called everybody. Wow. So, like, we almost had him at that point. And then, because they're from Buffalo. You know what sure, I mean? Sure. So, like, and it's, like, always going to be, like, if we can do that, like, this year we have Snapcase on it. That's incredible. Yeah. And, like, we, we almost had Buried Alive on it. Wow. <clears throat> but Buried Alive will end up being on it at probably sure. next year or something like that. But, yeah, it was just basically, I think we started, like, talking about, like, trying to just go to the biggest band into, like, trying to do it on a smaller level. Sure. Into right? more intimate. Yeah. Seasonal hometown yeah. love. So we were, like, let's... Giving back to the fans. For sure. Yeah. For real. And that's, like, we were, like, let's do an extravaganza. Like, let's try to do a fest, but not a fest. Sure. Like a celebration of like Christmas, you know what I mean? Like that's sure. it. And it's like, obviously we're gonna headline it. Like let's sure. go, biggest ego. Well, but the, it's like wrestling in a it's way. It's like if you're Dusty Rhodes and you're putting on a sh- an event. Yeah, okay, yeah. first announced Dusty Rhodes. Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you build it. You're the anchor. You're the foundation. The, yeah. Every time I die, you know. And last year, you know, we did it, and it was like it, the wrestling part. We didn't announce the wrestling first we announced it like last it was like here's just a thing right right you know what i mean and it wasn't like we didn't try to make it an afterthought we wanted it to be like this whole we wanted the whole event to be the event we didn't want it to be like one specific thing it wasn't like and every time i we didn't want it to be an every time i die show we were just people putting it on right we wanted it to be like with that when people left that day we're like oh man i ice skated today and it was right. awesome. well, that's what I was going to say. You guys have so much ancillary flavor going yep. on that takes it well beyond any sort of show yep. by the average band, no matter what season it exactly. is, no matter what theme they put on it. It's usually the just band, the same thing as a regular show. The event transcends the band. Yes, which right? is wonderful. Yeah, and it was like, 
I wanted people to be like, oh, my God, I saw Joey Janela and Penelope get choke slammed by Santa. Right. You know what I mean? I saw Josh. After ice skating and snacking. Yes. I saw Josh Barnett go against Timothy Thatcher. Oh, my God. In, like, literally a catch wrestling match. You know what I mean? Like, in the middle of, like, like wow. that match right there alone would be, like, people would pay for Dude, on anything. That's ridiculous. I didn't. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, uh, I, it's just about to come out around the time of your episode, but I've been sitting on the crown jewel of my interview collection. My friend and longtime Kevin Gill show listener, Timothy Thatcher, has granted amazing. us an interview. And as you know, he, he lets his grappling do the talking. I love So him. the fact that we were able to get in depth with him, and I've just been waiting oh, to put that out. One it's of my come favorite out real human soon. beings. Great guy, man. So respectful. And his love, he's just like Matt Cross or you or any of these people. Yeah. That their love of music and wrestling and like the punk rock, the heart, you know, that yeah. side of things. There's a, a, a group of us, Brody King. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Dude, uh, when I had, I had Josh Barnett sign off on it, I was like, please wrestle. Please <laughs> wrestle at my Christmas show. And he was like, absolutely. Done. And it was like, he was just like, yep, cool. And then it was like, he was trying to protect himself, you know? And I was sure. like bringing up like interesting things of, of dudes I'm friends with. I'm like, hey, Chris Dickinson. I love Dickinson. Sure, he's amazing. And you would talent. have a great match with him. And then he was like, ah, I don't really know him, you know? And he was protecting himself. And I sure. Get it. And he brought up Davey Boy Jr. Oh, sure. And I was like, okay, cool, you know? And then I I was like, Timothy Thatcher is like the smart, it's the oh, one. yeah. And when I brought it up to Tim, he was just like, dude, I need it. I need that match. But I'm living in Dusseldorf, Germany. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Ugh. <laughs> And then the carny comes out in you and you start going okay if i fly him from dusseldorf to jersey joey can pick him up in jersey and then bring him jersey. to the christmas yeah. show okay hey are you friends with jo jo joey john are you friends with with timmy thatcher like dude we've been on shows before but that dude's weird you know what like, i mean not like to, uh, not, not to me but yet yeah, to an not outsider meaning like he like get along but it's like we don't really know each other. Sure, sure. But sure, I'll pick him up. Yeah. You know, if it's going to save money. Then Joey ends up getting booked on the show. He's not going to be in Jersey. And I'm like, oh, no. So then it ended up being cheap. It, it was cheap to fly him from Dusseldorf. And what I'm getting at is like I almost canceled. I was almost like, dude, I got to find someone for a job. Sure. And it almost was Davy Boy Smith. We were like talking to Dave, Davy Boy Smith Jr. And then it ends up like Tim just goes, dude. I'll do whatever it takes for me to be on that show and wrestle Josh. And sure. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to spend the money. And I just ended up spending the money just to get him there. And like, just to make that, it happen. was awesome. Just to have Tim on the show is like great. Cause he's a, he's a dude. World and I class. never, I never wanted it to be outside of it's all dude. You know what I mean? Like all the guys that are on the show are guys that would enjoy the entire show. You know what I mean? And like when we did like our pre-show talk, it was like, guys, like, go out there and have fun. I don't give a fuck what you guys do. Just have fun, you know? And everybody had fun. It was awesome. Um, so then this year, when I started working with Blackcraft as a wrestler, I started, like, thinking, like, oh, man, maybe I could, like, take the brunt of stress off of me from being the guy that books because me and Jesse booked the entire thing sure. last time. And I was, like, paying out of pocket for things and stuff like that. I was like, this will be cool. They have a show. Let's do it. Right. And now we have a show and it's like, you know, we have like Johnny Mundo on and we have uh, OVE and we have um, Taya is on the show. Wow. And like the great Taya Valkyrie and yeah. John Morrison, both past guests of the Kevin Gill yeah. show. Soraya Knight. You know what wow. I mean? Like we have all those. Oh, sorry to Pinhead. House. You know, Pinhead is. I've is always part wanted to show. meet her. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, so Pinhead from Fellraiser is like the preacher. He plays like a character in Black Crab. Oh, yeah. Okay. And Someone like, was just telling me about this. Yeah, it's cool. So Jimmy Havoc's going to be there. Oh, and, fuck. You know, it's going to be – PCO is going to be there. You know? Oh, that guy. Have you seen him in person before? Yeah, he's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just stoked that there's going to be a rad show and the stress is off of me. Like, right, and have you have people that it. know how to produce wrestling, producing yeah. wrestling, and you can do your thing. Now, is that show completely sold out at this point? Yeah, kind of like, yeah. And that, But that's the thing. If a bro wants to go, you hit me up. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. And what about uh, uh, home video plans for that? Is that something that people so are going to see There's going to be streaming. Or? We're going to be able to stream the entire show. Don't. So, like, Blackcraft is actually going to do, like, the bands and the Oh, wrestling. my God. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Those Blackcraft guys are some geniuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really cool. So I love that when they, when they announced their company, I still remember the announced graphic. 
and I love the whole theme of it, the vibe of it, all of it. But even for me, just the, I forget what it was, but it was like pentagrams and like, yeah. I, well, do you remember the image? I remember it was yeah. just super striking and anti, it so was, anti-religion that yeah. I was, which Burning is my bridges. Yeah. That's what it was called. Yeah. So my, even though I have the same beliefs as them personally, like just seeing it where I'm like, oh, like that, yeah. you know how it is. Cause that, Polarizing. you might not be able to get into a certain building. You might not be able to get a certain, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, what's, what's wild too, is like, there's certain like wrestlers that won't would, take the booking, right? Wouldn't do the booking because of all that stuff because they were afraid like their mom would like pin and you're like dudes that are like i don't want to name names but like dudes well that are like dudes. out there and you're like that dude just did this <laughs> what you know what i mean right, like right. he's afraid they're he's afraid to be on a black craft show but like he just did this crazy thing what you know what if lucifer does a run-in yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so pull Something apart like with satan and god and yeah. then i got hurt in the schmas and yeah <laughs> but like that you know it's just funny when you hear like pro wrestlers have that type of like yeah, I can't do that. And it's like, you just got dick flipped by Joey Ryan. Right, you know, or whatever. Right, right. You know, like, yeah, whatever the comparable. Like, 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 you know. And it's it's wrestling. Like, it's a it's a work. You know, you know what I'm saying? Wrestling yeah. is a show. Like, yeah. there's no, I don't want to blow up anyone's spot. But as far as I know, there's no actual demonic activity going on no. in Black Reverend. I mean, unless you know otherwise. No. Have you seen anything, brother? No. Yeah. Just be real. I'm saying. I mean, I had a real. conversation with, like, with Pinhead down about, like, sure. Pinhead. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was, like, talking to him about Hellraiser. He was in a movie called Hellraiser. That's it. That was like the only demonic presence I saw in there. There was a guy in a cloak. Right, right. That was Which it. is pretty standard for wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, with all, you know, 20 years as a band, uh, you've had injuries as a wrestler, the ups and downs of touring, all this stuff, the writing and recording process can be grueling, all that. Has positive mental attitude played a part in, in your journey and in your, in your run, so to speak? Is that part of your mantra? For sure. I mean, like, obviously, like, I do what I love and, like, I die doing both of them. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. Like, plus, I'm not really good at anything else, like I said. So I kind of just found my niche. I'm going to try to stick it out. Sure, and just enjoy it. You know what I mean? And it hurts, but like at the same time, like, I could be a dude sitting in a, a cubicle and like my body doesn't hurt, but like that does just, that destroys your brain, right? For sure. And I don't want to do that, you know? And I never will. So yeah, it's like, this is. Like freedom, and that is not, and that's how I look at it. Well summarized, and uh, as we close it out, I know your most recent record, The Low Teens, has received like essentially universally uh, critical acclaim. Like yeah. people are loving it, not just the punters, the critics. Like yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone is unified in that the new re the new record is so dope. What's next for you guys? I know you just started up this yeah. tour, but w what's in your 2019 plans and stuff that you're able to talk about at this time, Man, sir? I mean, we've been so like fixated on the Christmas show that like. You know, <laughs> 2019 is like, like our manager brought it up and was like, he was like, all right, guys, come on. We got, we can get something going at Feb in February. And it was like, we, we all literally were like, yo, we've been around each other for two years straight now. This So like, right, non -stop. think about that. Like that, that record came out two years ago, you know, and we've toured on it for non -stop. two years. That hasn't happened for a band in years where like they have that much legs on a record. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And like, we haven't lost steam. So. I think we all collectively were just like, we want to be away from each other for a second to just like regroup and do like normal human shit because right now we're machines, you know? Right. And you just and want, it, you know what I'm saying, to step out of that world for, for sure. a moment. And like, if you want us to do something creative, you know what I mean? Like you have to like separate for that for a little bit. And that doesn't mean like, I'm not, gonna, I'm still going to talk to Jordan every day. I'm still going to talk to Keith every day, but we're not sitting in a van together. Sure, we're not sure. At the backstage. Together. We're not sitting on a stage together, you know, which is great. But at the same time, it's like we need a break to like let the creative juices build back up so we can like put it back. So, right. We're so gonna, refill those energy on cubes, if you will. Yeah. We're definitely going to write a new record in 2019. Nice. We're definitely going to record a new record in nine, uh, 2019. I just don't know when it's going to Sure, be. sure, you sure. You know what I mean? We have one Australian show. Okay. So we fly to Australia, fly right back, three days. Oh, wow. No. In and out. Okay. Done. And I got, it sucked. Robbie Eagles just hit me up and asked me to wrestle. Oh. Like, so I'm there, like, I think I'm, it's the day after the show, but I already booked my ticket. It was sure. really expensive. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to try to change it. I don't want to spend any more. Which sucks, though, because Robbie Eagles is sick and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, yeah, we have that. I have a ton of wrestling coming up in 2019. There's like talks of a tour in 2019. Sure, depending on how everything talk about lays who the out. Band is, but like, yeah, a a band asked us to go on tour, and it's like getting worked out right now. Dope. So yeah, there's gonna be some stuff. We just, it'll be slow though, 
And I, I, th- I think, like I said, we all need that mentally just to like. Of course. Yeah. You kind of have to let the, uh, what is that? You kind of like have to let the wounds heal. Sure. So like right now I'm in like, I think it was like four days into the tour and like Jordan farted and I hated it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, sure. I don't give a shit about farts. Farts come out of butts. That's what happens. But that one, it offended me because I'm around his farts all the time. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Familiarity. So if we took contempt. a little break and then he farted, his farts me, would smell like, like oh, music or roses. This is wonderful. <laughs> God, I missed that fart. You know? Now it's like, get that thing out of here, man. One, uh, one bonus thing that yeah. uh, I may leave this in or out, I guess, depending on when they announce it. However, I would like to share with the world as my announcement right now. Yes that your friends at Black Craft Wrestling have contacted your boy KG to take over commentary duties for a very special night, December 15th, yes. in Buffalo, New York. This was a show that I super wanted to fucking go to anyway, yeah. legit, and I had been looking into it anyway, and I was driving down to do the commentary on the Janela, That's I'm amazing. sorry, the Arquette, uh, Nick Gage match for yeah. Joe Janela's LA Confidential, and they called me to do that. I so, love that. Uh, I'm so, so super, you know that what I'm saying? That makes me so happy, like, dude. Ah! That makes me so happy. So, yeah, I'm just beyond geeked, and I'm happy to share that with everyone. You can't see it in person, but please buy it on pay-per-view, buy the yes, stream, buy the director's cut Blu-ray. Yeah. If they cut up the canvas afterwards and put it in frame the motherfucker, buy that shit, too. Yeah. Buy it all and get the Black Crab Wrestling tattoo. I love that. <laughs> yes. And uh, thanks for your time, oh, brother. Thank you so and, much. Uh, uh, just we'll see you down the road, man. Yeah, keep, we finally keep did Keep crushing it. it, brother. Yeah, yeah, and get some interviews that day too. There's oh, a ton fuck of yeah. people. So, uh, yeah, well, thank you for that, brother. Uh, just seeing today, Turnstile was on the show. It's like I love bands that aren't afraid to tour with other bands that fucking wreck shop. You know yeah, what I'm man. saying? That's like the old what I call the Aussie model. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Well, thank you, Andy Williams. You thank are the you. man, and much love to you and continued success, yeah. my friend. Boom. And just like that, we wrapped up the interview. We went on to go eat snacks and do the other various things we had to take care of to handle business that had to be done before that show had to be rocked. And let me tell you something. Every time I die knows how to rock a fucking show. Now, I mean, maybe that goes without saying because they've been doing it for 20 fucking years. But man, oh, man, to just see them in their element. And one of the coolest things I noticed about when they were playing and when their support act Turnstile, who are absolutely incredible. I've been putting it out there for a while, but I'm hoping to have Turnstile on a future edition of the Kevin Gale Show, man. I think they're just revolutionary. But what I noticed about when both bands were playing Turnstile and Every Time I Die, like 99.9% of the audience did not have their phone out. They were dancing. They were jumping up and down. They were rocking out. They were screaming. And it's so cool because so many concerts, we all know it. You look out in the crowd, it's a sea of cell phones. Everyone's watching the show through their phone, but for whatever reason, it's the metal, it's the realness, it's the rawness, it's the energy, it's making sure no one's going to fucking jump on you or some shit, but everyone was in the zone and watching the show, and I think that just gave the show uh, some unparalleled and unbridled energy. So much love to Every Time I Die for the hospitality, much love to all the fans of hard music here in the Bay Area for coming out to support shows like this, and much love to the groundbreaking hard times. You know about the hard times, the groundbreaking, brilliantly witty, news headline, parody, hardcore punk rock related news media organization. But uh, they also put on shows, man, and they bring some great, great bands to the area. Recently saw H2O a few weeks ago. That was a hard time show. Now they brought in Every Time I Die. They're bringing it everywhere from Gilman Street to the big rooms and much love to them because bringing music to the towns, man, letting people see it. For all of us who've gotten to see a million bands and all that, that's great. But there's always that person in the crowd seeing their first show that's maybe going to go on to a career in music, go on to a career in entertainment. You never know what might happen once you allow those doors to be open, once you kind of look at your future without limitations. Andy Williams and the boys and Every Time I Die certainly have no limitations regarding anything. Their tour schedule, they keep on grinding and shining. By the time you hear this, they'll be hitting up Dallas, Tampa, Jacksonville, Atlanta, Columbia, Greensboro, Richmond, Baltimore, Philly, Pittsburgh, culminating on December 15th at TID the season at the Buffalo Riverworks. This show is so dope because, you know, we talked about it in the interview but every time I die is handpicking the bands that play. 
And it's not just lip service for like hand picking as in, oh, these are all the bands that will play for the cheapest or these are all the bands that have the same booking agent. They're picking like literally their favorite bands and the bands they think are going to rock the house the hardest. Listen to this lineup. It's Every Time I Die headlining featuring Snapcase, The Bouncing Souls, The Messengers, Knocked Loose, Turnstile, Angel Dust, and Vane. That's a fucking bomb-ass lineup. Now, don't worry. This shit's been sold out for months. So if you don't have a ticket at this point, you're not going unless you know someone, I guess. Or maybe you could pull one of those uh, Mentos gimmicks. You know what I'm saying? And just... Whoosh. But I digress. Because as broken exclusively in the interview there, you heard Andy Williams and I talking about Black Craft Wrestling. And we heard the shocking revelation that your boy KG will be joining the commentary team on this very special night for Black Craft Wrestling in Buffalo, New York, as part of that huge tid the season fucking spectacular. And BlackCraftWrestling.com is going to have the whole thing available digital on demand. And if I could shine a spotlight for a second on Black Craft Wrestling, let's talk about their Spirits of the Dead show that is going down on December 15th that will be available on Worldwide Digital On Demand just a few days later. It's also going to feature musical performances by At Least Every Time I Die and I think a whole lot more. So you're not going to want to miss this one-of-a-kind digital download. Johnny Blackcraft, former Kevin Gill Show guest. You might know him as Johnny Mundo or Johnny Morrison. He's taken on the preacher's chosen son. Question mark, question mark, silhouette of an individual. Who is this chosen one? We'll find out in Buffalo. Groundbreaking women's wrestling match on December 15th, Spirits of the Dead. I'm talking about past Kevin Gill Show guest, Taya Valkyrie from Impact Wrestling, from Lucha Underground, from AAA. And she's taken on an absolute legend in British women's wrestling. Now, fuck that. She's just a legend in wrestling, period. Her family story is iconic and soon to be an unforgettably produced film by The Rock. I'm talking about Soraya Knight taking on Taya Valkyrie. There's a huge triple threat match as Matthew Justice takes on Jimmy Havoc, takes on the French-Canadian Frankenstein, PCO. Plus, our good brother Andy Williams, better known as The Butcher, will be teaming up with his homie Braxton Sutter, more ominously known as The Blade, as they take on Impact Wrestling Superstars OVE. And as you heard broken exclusively in the interview, your boy KG will be part of the commentary team teaming up with bees because our boy Johnny LaQuasto has some international bookings. So I'm going to be holding it down in his place, keeping his seat warm and entertaining your ear holes with insightful commentary and momentary digressions. Much love to the whole crew at Black Craft Wrestling and much love to you for listening to this episode of The Kevin Gill Show. We've been busy, busy beavers stacking, not chips, unfortunately. For that, we'd love for you to hit up our Patreon, buy some stuff at DignifiedBastard.com, like the Vision of Disorder Still 12-inch, the District 9, School of Hard Knocks CD. We got new hardcore reissues coming. We got... Podcast merchandise, stickers, support items, it all helps. We're putting in the miles, traveling to the towns, going to the places to get these interviews. And get them, we have. We have so many dope, dope interviews coming up. And sometimes they surprise you. Like this week, you know, with Andy Williams. Andy Williams, a musical maestro, a podcasting icon. We could have talked about any myriad of topics, and we went hard on professional wrestling, which is fine with me because the Kevin Gill Show brings you that mix. It's wrestling, it's punk rock, it's metal, hardcore, sprinkle in some video games and comedy. It's all there organically. Peep that back catalog at iTunes and Audio Boom, Stitcher, anywhere podcasts are heard. And you can hear interviews with John Joseph from the Cromags, Craig and Lou from Sick of It All, the guys from Agnostic Front, Freddie Madball, Danny Diablo. I could go on and on. It crosses all genres, and we encourage you to join the fray, join the movement, join the momentum, get on the team and roll with us. Represent PMA and positive mental attitude. Keep moving forward in a world that seems to be almost conspiring to bring you down. We've somehow gotten to a time in human history where access to information is actively making people seemingly stupider. So we got to work a little extra harder to raise the bar and do 
our thing, live our best life the way we can, and put out some positive mental attitude into the universe. Shout out to the homie Jamie Welton across the pond in the UK, back in the chair, slicing the cuts, stringing together the hits, and helping bring you the Kevin Gill Show each week. Much love to him, and you'll be hearing more from him on Patreon and elsewhere. Rate and review us on iTunes. Follow me on Twitter. Let us know if you heard this episode and where you heard it. Are you listening when you're driving, when you're working out? Are you avoiding family commitments? Are you, you know what I'm saying? How do you do it? Do you have it in, on a Bluetooth speaker at your job? I, I've heard a lot of cool stories over the years of where people listen, but I want to hear where you're listening. Also wanted to send a huge shout out to our homies at Game Changer Wrestling, Joey Janela's LA Confidential, an undeniable hit, a viral sensation. It's available digitally to download and stream from Fight TV, but it's about to drop in kind of like the director's cut format over at smartmarkvideo.com. That'll be on Blu-ray, DVD, and download. And what an honor it was for your boy KG to do commentary on that entire show. I've got to call a lot of crazy matches at a lot of crazy places, but to, it was an honor for me to call David Arquette versus Nick Gage. And as unexpected and as wild and off the chain and... Uh, you know, I, I mean, the footage speaks for itself. Maybe you saw and heard my voice. You saw the match and heard my voice reacting in shock and horror. They played it on TMZ. They played it on World Star. They played it on Joe Rogan. And it's all possible. And thanks to, one, the ungodly sacrifices made by David Arquette and Nick Gage, but also the promotional geniuses of Game Changer Wrestling, Brett Lauderdale, Danny DeManto, making this shit happen because to make a show happen 3,000 miles from your base, when you're based out of the Jersey area and you're running shows in LA and selling them out months in advance, that's some next level shit. So for your boy KG to be on the mic for them, to be working with people like Joey Janela and all this hot rising talent like my homie Jacob Fatu, you see the homie Jeff Cobb who's done so many KG show episodes moving on to bigger and bigger and bigger things the world is your oyster this as bad as things may seem on one level on the same level chaos creates opportunity and we live in a chaotic chaotic world so make the most of everything you can make the most of your dreams and move one step towards your dreams each day if you can this is your boy kg saying much love peace out i'll see you in buffalo and i'll be back next week with another bomb ass kevin gill show episode stay up and keep that PMA.